Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to share what I feel the Lord has given me to share with everyone this morning. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning, and thank you for all you've done and are doing in all of our lives. Thank you for Jesus Christ dying on the cross for all of our sins. Thank you for making a way where there was no way for us to be saved through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your unconditional love for all of us that reassures us that you will never leave us or forsake us. Lord, we pray for each and every one today as we go about our way. Lord, not our will, but your will be done. Here we are, Lord, your servants, willing and ready to serve you in any way you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray. This morning I'd like to share the inspiration called Morning Blessing. This morning when I awakened, I saw the sun above. I softly said, Good morning, Lord. Bless everyone I love. Right away I thought of you and said a loving prayer that he would bless you especially and keep you free from care. I thought of all the happiness a day could hold in store and I wished it all for you because no one deserves it more. I felt so warm and good inside. My heart was all aglow. I know God heard my prayers for you. He hears them all, you know. Next, I'd like to share a poem. It's called Father's Love Letter. The words you're about to experience are true. They will change your life if you let them, for they come from the very heart of God. He loves you, and he is the father you've been looking for all of your life. This is his love letter to you. The title is My Child. You may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I'm familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knitted you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but I am the complete expression of love. And it's my desire to lavish love on you simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good and perfect gift you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plans for your future have always been filled with hope because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on the seashore. And I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish with you, establish you with all my heart and all my soul. And I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I'm close to you. As a shepherd carries the lamb, I'm carrying you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I will take away all the pain that you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you, even as I love my Son Jesus. For in Jesus my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you and not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home, and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I've always been father and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I'm waiting for you. Love your dad, almighty God. God loves you, and I do too. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Next, I'd like to share with you a poem. 
It's called the teacup. This is our representation of how God has to remold us and make us. The teacup. A couple used to go to England to shop in a beautiful antique store. Their last trip was to celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary. They both liked antiques and pottery, especially teacups. Spotting an exceptional cup, they asked, may we see that one? We've never seen a cup quite so beautiful. As the lady handed it to them, suddenly the teacup spoke. You don't understand, it said. I've not always been a teacup. There was a time when I was just a lump of red clay. My master took me and rolled me, pounded me, patted me over and over, and I yelled out, Don't do that. I don't like it. Let me alone. But he only smiled and gently said, Not yet. Then wham, I was placed on a spinning wheel, and suddenly I was spun around and around and around. Stop it. I'm getting so dizzy. I'm going to be sick, I screamed. But the master only nodded and said quietly, not yet. He spun me and poked and potted and bent me out of shape to suit himself. Then he put me in the oven. I never felt such heat. I yelled and knocked and pounded at the door. Help me, get me out of here. I could see him through the opening and I could hear see, read his lips as he shook his head from side to side. Not yet. When I thought I couldn't bear it another minute, the door opened. He carefully took me out and put me out on the shelf and began to cool. Oh, that felt so good. Oh, this is much better, I thought. But after I cooled, he picked me up and he, he brushed me and painted me over. The fumes were horrible. I thought I would gag. Oh, please stop it, stop it, I cried. He only shook his head and said, not yet. Then suddenly he put me back in the oven. Not only was it like the first one, this was twice as hot, and I just knew I was going to suffocate. I begged and I pleaded, I screamed, I cried. I was convinced I would never make it. I was ready to give up. Just then the door opened, and he took me out again. He placed me on the shelf where I cooled and waited and waited, wondering, well, what's he going to be doing to me next? An hour later, he handed me a mirror, and he said, Look at yourself, and I did. I said, That's not me. That couldn't be me. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Quietly he spoke. I want you to remember then, he said. I know it hurt to be rolled and pounded and patted, but had I left you alone, you would have dried up. I know it made you dizzy to spin around the wheel, but if I hadn't stopped you, you would have crumbled. I know it hurt, and it was hot and disagreeable in the oven, but if I hadn't put you there, you would have cracked. I know the fumes were bad when I brushed and painted you all over, but if I hadn't put that on you, you never would have been finished. You would not have been any you would not have had any color in your life. If I hadn't put you back in that second oven, you wouldn't have even survived long because the finished would have not held. Now you're a finished product. Now you're what I had in mind when I first began with you. The moral of this story is God knows what he's doing for each and every one of us. He is the potter and we are the clay. He will mold us and make us and expose us to just enough pressures of just the right kind that we may be made into the flawless piece of work to fulfill his work, pleasing and perfect will. So when life seems hard and you're being pounded and patted and pushed almost beyond endurance, when the world seems to be spinning out of control, when you feel like you're in a fiery furnace of trials, when life seems to stink, try this. Brew a cup of your favorite tea and your prettiest teacup. Sit down and think of this story, and then have a little talk with the potter. This was submitted by Dot Richardson. Next, I'd like to share a poem. It's called Inspiration Through Each Day. Through each day, my shepherd walks beside me, guiding each step along the way. Well, he knows the path, for he hath planned it. As he, led, as he leads, I follow, come what may. There are days we walk through sunny meadows where the world is fair and care are few. And I share my joys and sing his praises for his blessings, bountiful and new. He may choose to lead me by still waters to a place of quietness and rest where he draws me close in sweet communion and my weary soul is cheered and blessed. 
There are times when my path winds draw, draw dark valleys, and each dark, each turn he knows and goes before. When I stumble and gentle arms embrace me, and his grace my courage doth restore. Through each night my shepherd watches over me, peaceful slumbered mine I need not fear. And as I close my eyes, I have calmed assurance his abiding presence will be near. Day and night my shepherd's love surrounds me. Day and night on him I can depend, for he's promised he'll never leave me, and he's got and he'll guide me till the journey's end. Next, I'd like to share an inspiration called "Live Life to the Fullest." One never knows what tomorrow will bring, so live life to the fullest today. Enjoy the treasures that God has given, and never give in to dismay. Don't let the dark clouds get you down. Be happy and cheerfree in mind. Each cloud has a silver lining that each of you must find. Always look for the good in others, and life will be happier for you. Goodness and love will always be, always make dark skies seem brighter and blue. Look, love each other as God has loved you, and peace will be yours to share. Know that whatever tomorrow brings will find you safe in God's care. The next inspiration is one life. You only have one life to live. Do all the good you can to make the world a better place for all your fellow man. You only have one life to live. Time is fleeting fast. Only the good that you can do will forever last. You only have one life to live. Be true to God and man. The faults will someday disappear and truth will rise again. You only have one life to live. Let love rule in your heart and you will know the peace of God when you have done your part. The next inspiration is footprints. One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from his life. For each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to him, the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his little life flashed before him, he looked back at his footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very saddest and lowest times in his life. This really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed during the most troublesome times in my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, My precious child, I love you, and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was I that I carried you. May the Lord always walk beside you. That is the motto of this poem. The Lord cares us. The next one I'd like to share is inspiration called Tomorrow May Never Come. If, not, if I knew it would be the last time that I'd see you fall asleep, I would tuck you in more tightly and pray the Lord to keep. If I knew it would be the last time that I would see you walk out the door, I would give you a hug and a kiss and call you back for more. If I knew it would be the last time I'd hear your voice lifted up in praise, I would tape each word in action and play them back throughout our days. If I knew it would be the last time, I would spare an extra minute or two to stop and say I love you, and I hope we never will forget. Tomorrow's not promised to anyone, young or old alike, and today may be the last chance you get to hug your loved ones tight. So if you're waiting for tomorrow, why not do it today? For if tomorrow never comes, you'll surely regret the day that you didn't take the extra time for a smile, a hug, or a kiss, and you were too busy to grant someone what turned out to be their last wish. So hold your loved ones close today and whisper in their ear. Tell them that you love them very much and you'll hold them dear. Take time to say I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you, and it's okay. If tomorrow never comes, we'll have no regrets about today. I hope you enjoyed all these inspirations. May the Lord bless you and keep you during the week. And always remember that God loves you, and I do too. Thank you.